share their knowledge with the world. And Okay, welcome back. This is the Cube. This is uh, Silicon Angle's uh, exclusive coverage of uh, the Fluent Conference. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. This is the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm joined with my co-host Jeff Frick today from Silicon Angle, and uh, we're excited to bring you wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Two days of live broadcast. We're going to broadcast the keynotes in the morning, and then do our normal Cube commentary, where we sit down, kind of anchor desk style, and uh, talk to the tech athletes. And one of our tech athletes, as we say here, is uh, Peter Cooper. Uh, founder of Cooper Press, uh, also one of the co-chairs with Simon St. Laurent. He's a chair. He's from England and uh, brings a different perspective, obviously having the chair uh, and also putting the program together and kind of herding all the cats to get the keynotes done, <laughs> all the logistics of these events. It's a lot of work. Uh, Peter, welcome to theCUBE. Oh well, yeah, it's great to be here. Um, you know, the, it's a lot of work to go into these events and you guys uh, pull off a great conference, um, but the market's evolving. Um, the challenge always is to be relevant. And, and deliver a great program to the developers. That's where there's relevance, you're providing great value, good collaboration, good networking, and ultimately the right trend signals and the right slipstreams that you can give those guys uh, data on so they can be better developers and build great stuff. So, so with that, what, what are some of the things this year um, that's happening in the conference program, and then we can talk about some of the tech trends. Boil down the the uh, the conference here. What's new about it? What's the same? What were some of the keynotes that just kicked off here on day one? I think the thing that we've really seen is that we've gone from trying to make this a, a JavaScript conference, precisely, to being more about the web platform as a whole, because JavaScript on its own, it's, it is very relevant to engineers, but in terms of the overall picture, it's really about the web platform and all the things that tie together with JavaScript, HTML5, um, you know, WebGL, all these other technologies are just as important as JavaScript. So that's actually what we've been trying to do with the program this year. We've trying to be in, make it a bit more deep, um, and actually cover some of those things, you know, have talks about gaming and things that you wouldn't naturally, you know, assume are to do with JavaScript. So, you know, we saw that with Brendan this morning. Um, he did that, uh, he did an Unreal Engine 3 demo, so it's like literally, almost like, you know, the game Quake or that type of thing, where you have the, you know, you're running around with a rocket launcher and all that type of stuff. And, you know, he had that in his keynote. And if you think JavaScript conference, you know, like even two, three years ago, you wouldn't think rocket launchers. <laughs> yeah, know, it's yeah. Uh, it's a totally different thing. So we are seeing more gaming coming in, but it is about that web platform. It's not just about JavaScript all the time. So that was a great demo in the keynote. Everybody yeah. had a huge roar of applause. So exactly, <laughs> you know, for the people who weren't there, what was so special about that that he was able to do and what he was actually demonstrating, not just running around uh, shooting up uh, zombies uh, with the demo? Yeah, I mean, of course, you know, just looking at it as, uh, from a gamer point of view, you think, what's so special about that? My PC's done that type of thing for years. What he was showing off in particular is some work that uh, Firefox and some people at Mozilla have done um, on something called ASM.js, I guess you could call it ASM.js, um, which is this idea of um, producing a more optimized compiler um, for a limited subset of JavaScript that can be very easily optimized down to um, machine code in real time, essentially, um, and run you know, just like many, many times faster than normal JavaScript, which you know, JavaScript has had a reputation of being a very slow language, but because of all the interest around it, like Google and just different teams have put so much money into making it fast, this is like the next step of that. Um, and part of the goal of ASM.js is to take languages like um, C++ and C, and then compile them down to this ASM.js, bring that into browsers that support ASM.js and will make it fast. So that's currently just Firefox, I believe, um, the nightlies at the moment. And then you can do the sort of things that Brendan did on stage. Yeah. Um, you can run that stuff and it's fast. Whereas if you ran that three or four years ago, he would have like you could have, he could have scrolled the mouse and then the next frame would be drawing like <laughs> line by line. So you know it's a real step forward and it's great to see these types of things in our keynotes here. Yeah. 
The other thing he talked about was really the expansion of JavaScript going into all kinds of devices. And yeah. he talked about it in TVs. And I wonder if, if you can talk a little bit about how that proliferation of, of this platform is enabling you know more opportunities for the development guys and it, yeah. you know, getting off of you know what were kind of classical computing devices in the past. Yeah, so as you say, you know, it, it, there was a certain thing that JavaScript was used for in the old days. If you go back like 10 years, you may have seen it used to um, make sure that you'd filled in all the information on a form on a web page, and that's like really advanced stuff, you know. Um, whereas now, you know, we're seeing games, we're seeing it on, as you say, TVs. So, um, you know, in the various newsletters I run, I run job listings, and I've even you know, recently had one. It was, I think it was like Netflix or someone like that, and they wanted just someone to come in, be a JavaScript developer for TV interfaces. That's it, that's the full job. Um, and you wouldn't have seen this like two years ago. This is a, a new thing, so it's getting everywhere. Um, even on you know the iPads and things that we're running, it's becoming a major way of making apps run. Even so-called native apps are including a lot of JavaScript and things now because developers are used to working with the web and like taking that environment to other places that you wouldn't necessarily imagine it being. Peter, the um, explosion of Web 2.0, the hype of Web 2.0 going back to the 2004 timeframe, 2005, 2006 ballpark, it really created that web developer explosion of LAMP stack, and then we saw the onslaught beyond that, you know, JavaScript, Ray, all just a tsunami of great stuff, mm -hmm. right? So then, you know, whether that people will argue whether that came home or not, you know, putting a fresh coat of paint on a website wasn't really what it was about. You guys really brought it to a level where JavaScript is not about that, it's about a different mindset, it's about, about uh, front end that's got great user experience across multiple platforms, web and mobile, we were talking about that on our intro today. Agile's been great on the web, but now Agile means something different for mobile. And then the, the advent of Node.js, for example, has, has highlighted the headroom that developers now have with mobile. So with all that kind of confluence coming together, what is the, the main tech trend right now that you're seeing that brings all this together? Because developers have to be amazing on the front end, great user experiences, and there's some serious coding involved, but yet now have to be real time, there's some big data peeking into this, you got analytics, all kinds of new techniques and methods. How has that translated into new code, new approaches? Can you comment and put uh, some commentary around that? I think the interesting thing you focused on in your question is about engineers and code. So O'Reilly used to have an event that was the Web2 uh, Summit, you know, it was a really big event. Um, they no longer run that, but that was more of a, a business-oriented thing. You know, you'd get a lot of like technologists going, but they wouldn't necessarily all be engineers. So that seems to be something that's happened in the recent years. You know, ten years back, the guy writing, or the lady possibly, um, writing JavaScript, wouldn't have been the star of the show. Whereas now, at a show like Fluent, that's now happened. Um, so we have a slightly different audience to some of those older shows. Why is that? Is it just just the demand for apps? Is it just what, what's the main thing about it? It just seems that the concentration of power now rests with developers because there's so many different things that you can use all of this code for. We've mentioned the TVs and things like that. It's not just, you can't just get any old JavaScript coder along to develop whatever it is you want because there's so many different niches and you mentioned um, Node.js for example. You know, you need some skills to be working with this type of stuff. Um, so yeah. the role of a developer has become more important even, um, this may be controversial for some of the audience, but it's become more important than you know the VCs, the people necessarily even running the companies and the idea yeah. people. Actually doing the implementation now requires an extreme level of skill. Yeah. Um, it's not just throw a few bodies at it and have a nice you know, coat of paint on say a website. It's, there is some coding involved and you need some serious chops on the CS and or just raw coding. And performance side as well. I yeah. mean we had a workshop yesterday with Ilya Grigoric of Google and he did like three hours just on putting performance in the middle of your, uh, your JavaScript app. And that's become important now because for all the advances, I mean, we spoke about um, JavaScript becoming a lot faster. You know, you still go to web pages and you scroll down the page and it's like lagging at like three or four frames a second. And it's like, it shouldn't be that way. And so it really yeah. still takes a real focus on performance to get it to work. Yeah, and, and you know, we've been covering the Node, we did the Node Summit was in San Francisco uh, two years ago, and I don't think they've had one since, but that really exploded and took DevOps into the developer market. With DevOps has been a phenomenon with Joint, we saw mm -hmm. Engine Yard, and a variety of other pre-cloud companies um, out there doing some great work around DevOps. And DevOps, you know, has been a cloud thing, and there's been some infrastructure involved, some great automation, abstraction away from, those, from the, the network stuff. Um, but DevOps now really is fundamental part of the coding. 
Um, and like you mentioned, JavaScript is much more in the center stage of all the conversations around user experience, et cetera. So I want to ask you, what do you think the big challenges and then opportunities are for developers? Certainly on the starting a new venture, um, it's really easy to start a venture as it's been documented in the web many times in blogs and our blog. And what are some of the challenges and opportunities for the, these developers um, that they have now in this current market? The biggest challenge, and I think it's one that we're really trying to address with Fluent, um, and probably even more so next year, um, because of the direction things are going, is that developers can't just say, I am a JavaScript developer. Uh, they can't just have that just one language um, you know, under their hat. They have to do, they have to think about the web platform, and that's what we've noticed when we're organizing the program for this. We can't just fill the program up just with JavaScript, JavaScript, JavaScript. We need JavaScript, WebGL, all these different things that you may associate like WebGL, which is the whole 3D canvas thing, with yeah. gaming but it's not just for gaming. Um, there's people using it for medical imaging, for example. Um, you know, you, you have all, you know, like the human body and rotate and doctors are using it and stuff like that. So there's so many technologies you need to have a grasp on. Um, and luckily we have lots of people here who are really good at that sort of stuff. Um, you're, you're, you're seeing a lot more people being very eclectic in what they choose to work with. It's not just, I'm a JavaScript developer. It's, it's I'm a JavaScript and performance and WebGL and you know, I work on Canvas and things like that. They need to have that full package. So I think you're going to see more people saying that they are, um, say, web platform developers or experts on the web platform, not just I'm a JavaScript developer. What do you think about the startup community? Obviously, you guys have a, um, the open mic night, Ignite, uh, we call it open mic, where entrepreneurs can get up there. What are some of the startups you're seeing here? Because obviously, a lot of startups in, in, in this crowd, a lot of developers. Uh, what are some of the hot areas you're seeing startups kick the tires on and build out on right now around um, Fluent? Well, one of the main things we see is especially tooling. So, you know, we have sponsors here that uh, work on IDEs and uh, tools that actually make your you know, life as a developer better. Um, I think Enyo you know, does that as well. Um, so we've got that side of it, which is kind of almost like the infrastructure side. That's like the software infrastructure, and then you have the hardware infrastructure, which are people like Rackspace and so on, who you know have been around a long time and continue to be relevant um, to these types of developers. But then I think what we're seeing is a com almost like a normalization of this stuff. So some of the startups that we've got in the Startup Showcase, for example, um, you know, last year they may have been a, a somewhat more JavaScript focused, whereas this year it's more like just general things. Um, so like you know, a delivery service and things like that. And you think, well, what's that got to do with JavaScript? But they're using all this JavaScript and web platform stuff behind the scenes to make their offering more kind of seductive, more useful, and more slick. So kind of platform related things, in yeah. a way, so right? It, it really is. The platform has become normalized. It's not just like, this is a website anymore. You know, the web is a platform and it's kind of almost like the default platform now. You know, it's like people don't just say, why haven't you got a native app if your website is really good? Because they can use it on their iPad, on their computer, and you know, whatever it is they want to do. So Peter, what's, uh, you, got, you put out all this great weekly, I mean, you, got, you are right on the pulse of this stuff. What's the next big hill to take? What's the next big challenge? And I know it's, it's, everything's kind of moved to this iterative process, we're going little by little, but what's the next big, big challenge that, that the community's going to try to go after? I think we're seeing some stuff happening with, there's always been this argument between like native apps and the web, and we're seeing that a little bit more, um, especially with the advances in uh, responsive design, for example. Um, there are like, you know, actual newspapers that had dedicated apps. I think the Financial Times is a, an example of this, where, you know, a company had an app, and then they're like, well, hang on, we can just do all of this with our existing processes on the web and just make it responsive. Um, so we're seeing things like that happen, um, and I think that battle is going to carry on. We're going to see uh, some kind of conclusion to it. Um, Which is pretty interesting with this whole proliferation of apps. So what you're saying is that, yeah. that that potentially is a temporary was a temporary solution as the web as a platform enables people to really mm. build it natively into the, yeah. into the, I don't know if browser is the right word, but whatever the... I guess it would yeah. be the browser-based uh, interface with the, with the information. We may well see a more of a marriage of that. So even if things look like apps, they may be web technologies in the background. And um, again, Mozilla is actually a good example of that. They've got their uh, phones coming out based on Firefox OS, and Firefox OS is HTML5 based. So if you load an app on a Firefox OS phone, you're running an HTML5 app. So they've kind of married those two ideas together. So it's not like web's going to win or native's going to win. It's kind of like web as one, but through the back door. Okay. It still looks like an app. People right. think it's an app, right. but it's the web. Right. 
And at the end of the day, I really don't care. I just want the experience. Exactly. So whatever the plumbing exactly. is that delivers it yeah. to me, I really don't care. So we're going to go to Twitter for some questions. So Eric, oh. Eric Ranchow asks, uh, hey, Fluent Conference. Hey, that's, that's you. That's you. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> Eric, I'm asking you a question now. So I just tweeted to you. Uh, hey, hey, Simon, Fluent Conference, hashtag. Anyone care to uh, anyone care to argue anyone care to argue that responsive web design and agile design development can play well together? Ain't buying it. Hashtag. So that's his, so basically saying is that okay, web, responsive web design and agile design uh, can play well together. He's saying he, he's not buying that. What's the, some of the conversations around that that you're hearing? Um, I'm not like in terms of my day-to-day -day work, I'm not directly involved in responsive web design, but I do actually produce a newsletter for Appentu, who are a sponsor here, and they are very very strongly into. Um, responsive design. Well, describe um, for the folks out there, what is the difference between the two? Um, well, they're two different things, really. I mean, responsive web design is this whole concept of producing, because like, if you've got a website and it's just like one fixed size and you resize your browser and there's scroll bars and you load it on your phone and it's just all shrink down. Yeah, that's like, just our, like, like a, our website. Yeah, that's just like a, a normal static <laughs> yes. website, essentially. Yeah. yeah, we need work there. Um, Anyone watching, please call me. But uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, there are technologies now that you can use, like uh, CSS media queries, that you can ask the device, essentially, if you are of a yeah. certain size. The sucky website, the sucky website yeah. is static. Yeah. And so responsive is what? Having the ability to, to respond to different um, yeah, you say it will look this way on this type of device, it should look this way on this type of device, and then kind of in between it kind of you know, tries to figure out the best uh, way of going about it. And then agile Ag development, you know, it's kind of really like the, the business process yeah. you use with your stakeholders and so on. So I see them as kind of being yeah. incompatible things as such, but not in the sense that yeah, yeah, you yeah. couldn't do it with well, agile. Well, I, I have a comment, I have an opinion on this, so I'm glad he brought that out. Now you, you kind of helped me kind of tie that together, is that I personally believe, this is again my personal opinion, in my many years, maybe I'm old school, but I think that responsive is definitely the way to go. Agile is a methodology for pushing code. Great for web development. Push code all day long, you know, hey, you know, things break, you, you know, as Mark Zuckerberg says, break things and push it. But mobile, it's very, very difficult to push agile. I'll tell you why. People don't upgrade as much on mobile, so mobile is much more uh, involved in terms of having a QA process, where agile, that is the QA, in my, in my opinion. So we're seeing that tease out now. So, you know, with that, mobile's a really big part of it. And some will say mobile experience should be much different than the web. So web's agile, no problem. Responsiveness, I think they do play well together. In mobile, I think it's a little bit different because, Agile process doesn't really fit well into mobile. I mean, iterating is cool, but like pushing code all the time will cause a bad user experience. What's your take on that? <laughs> I mean, it's, a, it's my opinion, but I mean, um, what do you think about that? I mean, mobile, can they support that agile methodology? I don't work with it, so this is a very easy answer for me to give. Like, you know, <laughs> Ejection. Are we like, yeah, you know, yeah, it okay, totally he, works. Yeah. Um, but no, I know there are many tools around nowadays yeah. that will allow you to do mobile testing very, very quickly and easily. You know, it will show you something on multiple devices yeah. all at the same time, that type yeah. of thing. So, but I see what your point in that there is a lag compared to the desktop. The developer can't just yeah. run 10 mobile platforms on their desktop in the way that they can run 10 different browsers and just go test, test, test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I saw a couple of mobile apps, I won't say their names, but really had a lot of promise, good development teams, just really kind of go dead on arrival like a lead balloon because they were trying to apply Agile, so that first launch of the app where you get that stickiness, you get that momentum, it kind of falls short, you got to import address books. So yeah. just for developers, just you know what I've seen, again, my observation, you can't just put Agile over this. So again, I'm done, done ranting. We'll see how it plays out. I mean, I, you know, Agile's great on the web, but um, this responsiveness thing has been a real conversation yesterday in the hallways here. And, and so, um, any programs around that here in the conference that you guys are, want to highlight? Um, there's not actually a massive amount of uh, content to do specifically to do with responsive web design. I mean, we have people here, who, uh, you know, sponsors who are very much into it, who can, you know, people can talk to about it, but. No, I don't think there's anything significant in the program. It's just responsive web design all the way. Um, I could be wrong. My memory is never very good. Well, I mean, we'll see how the demand is. If it's hot, I mean, it becomes it gets some momentum. And it's, it's just all about what the users this want. This is something that you know behind the scenes we have discussed. In that um, we do have design-related things in the program, but because of you know the space that we've got, I think we've got like about 60 talk slots. Yeah. You know, we, there's all these JavaScript things that we do want to cover and other web platform things that sometimes the, the design takes a little bit of a back seat. So we only have a handful of design yeah. talks, but we want to extend that for uh, next year if there's the interest of So course. on a personal question, i got to ask you, we're going to have Simon on tomorrow to close out the program, uh, the other coach, Simon St. Laurent. What should we ask him? <laughs> <laughs> and don't tell him what you're going to tell us. Ooh. Give us a good zinger Come on, for him. I don't think he's watching the cube right now. No, he's too busy running around <laughs> doing logistics, and he's a great <laughs> guest. But you know, I want to just because you got the inside baseball on what's going on at the conference. What's a good topic to discuss with Simon? 
I have no idea. I've, I've, <laughs> Come on, give Simon, us a personal dirt then. <laughs> Simon has been so nice um, throughout the whole process to everyone that I haven't been like constantly scheming in the back of my head, how can I get it? Um, whereas, you know, some people I might want to do okay. that. So, right, we're no. going we're gonna to ask some good questions. Um, what's, what's next for you guys as you guys go through the courses program? Just walk us through your mindset right now. Um, obviously, the keynote's just kicked off here on day one. Yeah. What's going to, what do you, how do you envision the rest of the show playing out and what's next for Kaluan? Well, one of the good things for me is that, you know, we've done a reasonably good job of getting the program together that I could almost just go and get on a plane now and the show would still run fine. And, you know, it would work. So actually, most of my work um, over the next couple of days is thinking about how does this relate to next year? You know, because it's going to be bigger, it's going to be, you know, there's going to be some changes and the focus is going to be slightly different. Um, and how does what we're seeing and the feedback we're getting, you know, including people that might message into your show as well, how does that play into what we do next year? Um, so, you know, if there's anyone watching that is here and has ideas for, you know, you should do this next year, you should change this, get rid of this, we want to hear that type of stuff. Um, and the main thing that I can give away really is that it's going to be more web platform focused. We're not just going to keep saying JavaScript, JavaScript. It is, it's become that bigger picture. Yeah, and, and the demand on the enterprise side is, is also kicked in huge. We're yeah. seeing a lot of BYOD, a lot of analytics, a lot of big data, a lot, again, a lot of service, a lot of security. Yeah. Again, complex stuff, not just consumer. Yeah. So, Peter, we're sitting here in the valley, and John and I both live in Palo Alto, so we're kind of valley-centric. I wonder if you could give a perspective from the other side of the pond, kind of, you know, from, from the UK side and the European side, and, and this whole movement and, and the vibe there relative to when you come over here. I think the interesting thing, especially um, about the UK, is that there have long been um, lots of really good like web design conferences that, that, that just focus on the design. So we take a bit more of a technical angle than that, but there have been some great design um, you know, events and there's tons of great designers there. I think if we ever do like a fluent EU, I think we would help to bring some of that more technical aspect in. Um, so I think we do actually have a reasonable amount of people that attend the conference from Europe. Um, partly because there just isn't that, I mean, that I'm aware of, that overarching event in the way that we're doing it here. Okay. So it would be great to take it over there at some point, but we people are coming here to see it. You know, I've, um, there's people from France here, Germany, um, you know, we even have speakers from overseas. Um, you know, we have a speaker from uh, Argentina. So people are coming to here. Um, and I think that's partly just because of the, the cachet that San Francisco has. You know, right, you know right. that you're kind of in the heart of this whole industry. So people are happy to come here. Whereas yeah. if we were doing this, you know, in um, like Iowa or somewhere, we might struggle a bit more. Um, and you might not be here either, so, you know. That's, this is, this uh, well, is a good the, place the, to the do it. The queue goes everywhere. We go, we go wherever, wherever <laughs> the event is, we go. Okay, so give us a plug, final question for you, just on the next couple of events. I mean, do you have, do you have any more outside the U.S.? I mean, what's the plan for Fluent just next year? What's the game plan for the Fluent conference? Um, well, we have put together the, um, the contracts and everything for the next year is where it's going to be and all that type of stuff. I can't reveal any of that, so there's going to be a reveal at the end of the uh, keynotes tomorrow. Oh, so okay. I guess I'm giving away, <laughs> I'm announcing an annou announcement, okay. um, essentially. Um, so that's all going to happen tomorrow. Um, but really, you know, I, I guess people are going to be bored of this by now, which is probably good that this will end soon, because I keep saying web platform, web platform, web platform. That is the focus for next yep. year. So where you see JavaScript today, it's probably going to say web platform tomorrow. Well, Peter, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate it. I know you're super busy. Again, JavaScript is evolving. It's real software engineering, a lot of coding, server side to the edge. Uh, for mobile and web, it's exploding. It's uh, tons of technology coming out, new tools, platforms, tooling, et cetera. Uh, we're here at the Fluent Conference live. This is SiliconANGLE's exclusive coverage of Riley Media's Fluent Conference. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We extract the ceiling from the noise. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. <laughs>